Uh, Madam Chairperson, you do now have quorum. I know a couple of people are going to join us in a few minutes, but you do now have quorum if you'd like to begin. All right, let's just go. People can hop in <clears throat> as they wish. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, this, as this is being held via Zoom, um, we ask all board members indicate their attendance by saying A in their name after their name is called, and then as well where they are tuning in from. Um, so that's just an important reminder at the beginning. So I think roll call. Crouch. Yes, East Lansing. Houston. Croom. Walsh. Uh, Ray Walsh, East Lansing. Kruger. Quinn. Uh, here, East Lansing as well. Greg. Sorry, I wasn't ready. I am here mm -hmm. attending from East Lansing. And Yonkis. Here from East Lansing. And I am also here, Amy Slushler Schmidt in East Lansing, in my office in East Lansing. Okay. And just a couple of reminders before we continue on the agenda. Um, all members of the public will have a chance to address the board during public comment. In terms of process, each board member will be called on individually to speak during each item. Board members are asked to please state their name before speaking, make a motion, etc. All board members may say pass if they don't have a comment. All votes will be taken by roll call. Um, and that's about it. So moving on to, I gotta zoom back up. I don't know where my... Can everybody see the agenda on their screen? My screen? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, well, that's okay. Yeah. Next is just approval of the agenda. I just wanna make sure you guys see my stuff. I'm like trying to get it back full screen for me. So we can move on to the first part. I think I can't read it. What's the first yeah, approval one? of the agenda is next. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Yes, I'm Chanel makes a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Excellent. It has been sec um, there is a motion in the second, and I will do a roll call vote. Crouch. Yes. Houston. Crew. Walsh. Yes. Kruger. Quinn. Yes. Greg. Yes. Yonkis. Yes. Excellent. The motion passes. Chanel, you're muted. Yeah. <laughs> last, <laughs> uh, the last meeting minutes, approval of the minutes. I will motion. I'll second. Seconded by Greg. Excellent. And I will do a roll call vote. Crouch. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Quinn. Yes. Greg. Yes. Yonkas. Yes. Excellent. The motion passes. Um, and then this is the consideration to limit the public comment to two minutes because of. Yeah, so due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I know we've discussed this several times, but the city attorney's office generally recommends that boards and commissions limit public comment. We have historically a limited com public comment to two minutes per individual. Um, and I will uh, keep track if, if that is um, what this board determines to do. Um, and it does appear that we have one caller um, in, in the queue currently. So. Um, if you would like to limit the public comment to two minutes, then that would require a motion and a second and then a vote. I'll make that motion, Chanel. Greg seconds. Second. Okay, and I will do a roll call vote. Crouch. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Quinn. Yes. Greg. Yes. Yonkas. 
Yes, but I think I'm gonna have to tune out now for a little bit, so. Okay, well, and I see that Mr. Kroom just joined us, so. I don't <laughs> even know. So Mr. Kroom, can you hear me? Jim, I think you're muted. Thanks for everybody's patience. I just, I'm trying to acknowledge for the record who's joined us. So at 2.08, it appears that Mr. Kroom has joined us now as a board voting board member. And at uh, 2.09, it appears that Mr. Kruger has now joined us as a voting board member as well. So I just wanted to indicate that for the record and the minutes will reflect that. Um, Mr. Kroon, we are in the process of just taking a vote on limiting public comment to two minutes per individual. I'm, I'm not certain if you're um, in a position to, to yet vote or not. If you can hear me, Jim, could you unmute yourself? Okay. I think Jim might have frozen out, so we're going to give him a moment. And Mr. Kruger, I see that you just joined us. Um, we are just voting on whether or not to limit public comment to two minutes per individual. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So that. Hello. Means, can you hear me now? I can, Mr. Kroom. Could, uh, could you hear what I was saying earlier? I just. I did. I vote yes. Yep. Limiting. Okay. Public comment. Perfect. Okay. So with that, that motion has now um, passed unanimously. I have indicated when the board members have joined us. Um, and so now, Chanel, if I think that you generally uh, share a little bit about public comment and then I can unmute the caller. Okay, um, moving into public comment, each caller in the queue will have two minutes to address the board. Callers will be identified by the last three digits of their phone number when called on, you will be unmuted. At the end of the two minutes, the secretary will share that the two minutes has passed and they will place you back on mute. If you do not wish to speak, please indicate so by saying pass. The following is not a requirement, but it does help the clerk. If you choose to speak, please clearly state your name and business affiliation or address before addressing the board. Thanks. Perfect. Okay, and the caller that I have in the queue, um, the last three digits are 963. Again, the last three digits are 963, and I will unmute you now. Hi, this is Alice Drager for East Lansing Info. I saw that you all had a handful of our articles in our Spend Local series in the packet, but we've actually published now 43 articles in the Spend Local series. And I was calling actually to encourage you all to continue to contact us with anything you want done in that series. We've done features on small businesses. We've done features on sales. We've done features on GoFundMe projects that businesses are doing. We're happy to cover anything you think we should be covering there. So keep contacting us. Uh, we were actually contacted by Piper and Gold after um, we'd already started. And we tried working with them a little bit, but that didn't really go anywhere because we tried to set up a spreadsheet and it was too labor intensive for businesses that are already stressed out. So all it really takes is a 10 minute phone call of one of our reporters with a business owner. We do the rest. We make sure the article gets done. We get the photography done. We push it all out. Our managing editor, Emily Joan Elliott, is spending a lot of her efforts on this with my blessing and the blessing of our board. And we have a lot of excellent reporters, especially Sarah Spohn working on this um, and also Ann Nichols. So as many businesses as you know of, we are happy to hit a business more than once if there's something new going on. Just keep contacting us. Any ideas that you have, we will absolutely take and run with it. We'll also push it out on Facebook. We'll push it out on Twitter. We'll push it out through our mailing campaign. Um, and we're going to start doing a paper edition of Eli once a month as a test product. And so we can also push stuff out there. So please be in touch with us. Tell us what we can be doing to help. Thanks. Thank you very much. Amy, you're muted. That's not helpful, sorry. Um, that is the only caller that we have in the queue. So we can move on to other agenda items. Perfect. I don't know, did you see an email from Justin? Amy? I did. Um, I just uh, sent forwarded on to him my um, appointment and he says that it appears to be working. So I'm not going to be surprised if Mr. Houston joins us here in a minute. I am, I am in the meeting. 
He's right I'm there. He's labeled as Amy. Slushler so Schmidt, we will. Don't, don't get confused. Uh, I can fix you. Okay. Nothing like technical difficulties. I feel like we could be like on a bloopers reel today, but we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this going, guys. Okay. You are now just in Houston, so yeah, as it may. Okay, I am now going to uh, pull up the agenda. No, we don't have that. It does not sound familiar. Sorry. We will. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So we are going to move on to financial reports, the DMB Treasurer's Report, December. Yes. yes, thank you. So um, actually quite a bit of activity in the month of December, as you can imagine, um, with the holidays. Uh, I'm going to start with page two, as I normally do, and then um, uh, progress into page one for everyone. So um, business as usual in the sense that you did pay um, the work order salaries and um, the computer rental that primarily again goes to support our two downtown management board interns. Um, we uh, paid for yard signs that I'm going to give you an update on, but we did purchase and have been distributing and are going to distribute again on Thursday yard signs for East Lansing residents that say su support your local business and have a QR code if you may, perhaps you saw um, those in your packet materials already. Um, we did pay YIFTI for the Downtown East Lansing gift card promotional program, the first one, and that first one was paid for by you, the Downtown Management Board, and then I'm going to talk to you about the second one, which was um, with the Downtown Development Authority's um, financial support. Uh, we also did make um, a contract payment with um, uh, Piper and Gold, so you're going to see in January that the final payment um, will be, be issued to them. Um, and we also had a couple of ads regarding our um, Downtown East Lansing gift card program. I'll be frank, you had allocated up to $500. We only spent closer to $200 because it was so, so popular. So I think that that's great. Um, and then you're going to see um, the, the final payment for the Garland and Bows for Bronner. So again, we added um, some additional decorations um, up along Abbott Road and in the Ann Street Plaza area and along Albert Avenue, a portion of Albert Avenue. We are intending to um, do the remaining portion of Albert Avenue, um, hopefully for next fiscal year. So those were the, the major expenditures. Um, you know, really kind of, I wanted to sort of um, maybe just kind of digress into my second pres uh, presentation as well, but really the way that it stands today, you know, we had developed the fiscal year budget um, thinking that hopefully at this time, the COVID would have perhaps been in a little bit better, better space. So, you know, we had still budgeted or assumed we might have some, some programming opportunities for some revenue. Um, so this budget is based off of that, but this next budget I'm going to present you with is like if we have absolutely no fundraising mechanisms, kind of where we are to date. So, um, you know, we spent in um, um, last month a little over $4,000 in, in general admin and activities. Um, you know, you still do have um, close to uh, $11,000, if you will, that has not been expended. So I just wanted to kind of make that clear to everybody. Um, and so I think that that's going to kind of uh, move me right along into what I wanted to talk to you just about budget projections. So this is the type of year where we start to look at budget estimates. You know, staff is called on by the city to kind of look at, you know, a snapshot picture. So, you know, when we um, look at where we were at, the actual year to date shows you guys, um, you know, uh, where we're at. So all the revenues that, you know, we projected to have to come in and sort of what we've spent. So we projected you know, by the end of the fiscal year, we'd have $64,510.54 that would come in. And we expected, you know, at that point, uh, we'd have about $41,005 spent. The issue is, and not really an issue, but I just kind of wanted to bring this to everybody's attention, that essentially we assumed that we would probably fundraise close to $6,500 because we usually bring in about $3,800 to $4,000 in like our cocktail soiree as revenue. Um, but I just don't know if we should count on having sort of any fundraising opportunities. I do know with the caveat of, you know, perhaps there are some other creative things that we can think about that would help raise money for like our gift card program. But what I did was um, I really wanted to provide you with budget projections without any additional revenue. So like if, if we received no more money from this day through the end of the fiscal year, Essentially, what would happen is we would have $69,607 in revenue. And to date, sort of if we didn't really spend any money, okay, so like we've accounted for everything that, you know, our, our, our call loop and all everything that we've budgeted for this year, 
we would have spent 58,589.20. Does that make sense to everybody? So what that means is you have about $11,017.80 remaining as, as in you get no more revenue. Now, obviously, if you have revenue come in, that number can increase, right? So if we bring in $5,000 in revenue, we can you know, have more money pending. But I wanted to present that to you, particularly today when we talk about perhaps some sponsorship opportunities or we think about you know, larger term projects. Jesse, did you have a question? Am I seeing a hand? Oh, okay, I just wanna make sure. Um, you know, that being said, so the reason I'm drawing this to your attention is that there's $11,017.80. I think everybody's pretty much with me. You know, I just wanted to kind of point out that, that generally what we do is we usually allocate about $500, for example, towards the jazz festival, $600 towards the science festival, um, you know, $2,000 towards the summer concert series. I don't know if it is this board's preference, for example, if we say, hey, of the $11,000 we know we have, you know, we take that out and we say we're going to support like $5,000 in event support. Or if perhaps this board at this time says, you know what, the COVID-19 pandemic is unprecedented in, in so many ways. Uh, maybe we just don't necessarily, you know, plan to expend all of those funds like we normally do. So I'm not necessarily asking for a final answer today, but I did want to just give you like a more comprehensive overview on kind of kind of where we're at with everything. So bottom line, you have about $11,000 remaining in your fiscal year budget if we don't fundraise anything. Does that make sense to everybody? And I certainly think this is something that both marketing and business relations can talk about later on this month. Um, but that's really where we're at, you know, and there's other things that we sometimes do that I just, I just don't know. It's really up to this board. Like, you know, generally we spend a couple thousand dollars and update the visitor's guide. Is a print material something we think is worthwhile right now? Or because there's so many changes, do we just continue to focus like on our Explore Downtown East Lansing app and, you know, have digital references and resources as much as possible? So um, that's where we're at. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have, but kind of the long and short of it is right now you have 11,000 a little more than $11,000 remaining that could be allocated between now through June 30th. Any questions? I have a question because I'm not an expert on yeah. financial reports. Um, when we're talking about like the direct advertising events like Winter Glow, that type of thing, that has not already been expended or has that been expended? It, it has not. We have not expended anything. I think you guys can kind of say it like in these categories. So we didn't spend anything for Green Friday. Nothing has been expended. So my point is, right, you could, you certainly could. You could say, okay, of our $11,000 remaining, let's still plan to spend, you know, let's call it $3,600, right, or so in event support. It doesn't have to be in these categories, but it certainly could. But I wanted to make you aware of that because I think that we're all pretty familiar with the fact you actually have a, have a letter in your packet today that, you know, I think the, the normal um, uh, festivals are probably going to come and, and, and seek fundraising again and seek sponsorship um, requests, even if they're in a little bit different format. So, but no, Chanel, we have not spent any, any money in these categories. Obviously, Green Finder, Winter Glow are done. Um, and we did, I know that we talked a lot about, you know, we really took that $3,000 we'd normally spend on an event and spend it on the gift card program, um, which I think was what most of us feel was pretty successful, but the rest of it has not been spent. Does anybody have any other questions about that? Okay. Okay. While it is certainly something that we can continue to discuss at the subcommittee level, I just really wanted to give you sort of a six month snapshot, a forecast for, for thinking about things and you know, um, sort of to help us identify priorities. Jesse, do you have a question? Yeah, I just, um, if you don't mind going back for just a second, have you yeah. had any discussion with the directors of the arts festival or the jazz festival to kind of feel out what they're thinking of in terms of what those festivals might look like? I have not. Um, the most the most correspondence I received was the the letter in your packet from Heather Mahano, um, and that's that's what I've received. I have okay. to do that. Okay. Um, I, I imagine that um, there will be some recognition of both of those things, but that the uh, format might look very different depending on what's happening at that time. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because I know that last year, like the art festival did a virtual festival. I don't know if anybody was able to log in, but that's what I recall about last year. So, 
Okay. Cool. Okay. okay. So I just kind of wanted to bring that to everybody's attention and kind of share where we're at. Obviously, if you have additional questions, please feel free to email me, call me, and, and we will discuss those. But I will also put this on the agendas for discussion at the subcommittee level so that we can dig a little bit deeper in um, uh, so that we can kind of continue to prepare for the spring months. So those are my financial reports. All righty, so let's move on to 4.1. So um, it has launched. So on Wednesday, January 6th, the City of East Lansing and the Michigan Economic Development Corporation launched a placemaking project fundraising campaign. I can't see all of you, but if I could, I would hope that by a show of hands, you would say that, yes, you've seen something, a press release, a social media post, something, something about this. Good. I'm seeing, I'm seeing most of that. Um, so it's titled Daytime, Nighttime, Anytime, and the project seeks to raise $50,000 in funds to activate several public spaces and to launch business support activities in the downtown. I know that we have discussed some of these, not all of these, um, at length. I know that Adam Cummins has come in and chatted with us as well. Um, but just to kind of give you a, a, a snapshot, um, essentially the placemaking project encompasses several events and activities, including the launch of the underground market in the MAC garage, um, implementation of an elevated plaza space at the Marriott Hotel, uh, the installation of lighting along Yen Street Plaza and other um, public alleyway areas, um, the launch of an art installation project that I'm going to uh, chat just a little bit more about. This is with the um, public and private schools in East Lansing where children's artwork is going to be displayed in business locations. Um, East Lansing Public Library reading sessions that would be um, administered sort of through social distancing. Um, and even some TikTok challenges that myself and some staff are working on. Um, it is extremely comprehensive. That is not a limited list. So if folks do have a couple of minutes, you know, a spare 15 minutes to kind of look through the whole proposal, I would really encourage you to do so. Um, there is a lot in here, um, you know, and a lot of, in my opinion, you know, exciting and important um, programming. So the way that, that this particular um, campaign works is that um, the city of East Lansing, primarily through the Downtown Development Authority, you know, has applied for these funds. If, um, if this fundraising campaign is able to raise $50,000 um, in the next 30 days, then the MEDC is gonna match that. And so now instead of having $50,000 to do programming, we have $100,000 to do programming. So I think that that's the really exciting component of it. Um, the project is underway. Uh, I don't know if folks have been able to look at it or see it. Um, but it is underway. I'm going to see if I can click on this without losing um, uh, anything. So right now there's $12,970. Um, I can tell you that, for example, the East Lansing City Council has contributed funds and that, uh, you know, um, other city staff members are working really hard to try to, to, try to fundraise this. So um, sort of based upon the fact that COVID-19 is happening right now, and I think that there are still some unknowns, and the fact that this project really draws a lot of programming, so it's comprehensive programming that is frankly launching as early as Friday and gonna go through the fall, um, you know, the request was that you consider funding. Um, I had put in there, you know, perhaps up to $5,000. I recognize that that's almost half of your remaining budget, so perhaps board members would, would feel differently. Um, but, you know, there is just a request for consideration of sponsorship and funding. So um, I think that uh, obviously the funding would come from the contract services um, line item of the budget. Um, and I'm happy to, to answer any questions you might have, but um, I think that, you know, it's really just before you for consideration of whether or not you would, the DMB itself would like to provide some funding towards, towards this project. I have a quick question, Amy. Yeah, go ahead. We have done a we have done some money towards the downtown activation project already. Yes or no. So the downtown management board has what we have spent some funds on are and it, it's not specific to the project. We have done some like ancillary things like the gift card program, which right. is in here, but I think that it's a new program that would be related to the gift card program. And then we have done some things like support downtown East Lansing businesses with like some yard signs and some flyers and some posters. Again, like I think when you think about like, like th that 30,000 foot view, all linked, but um, we have not provided, the DMV has not provided any funds yet specific to this project. Does that make got sense? Got it. Okay. Yep. I, yes. I kind of got a toe in so many different boards. I couldn't remember who 
<laughs> money I understand. Out. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. Yep. And we've certainly dedicated staff time, like myself and the interns have gone and like helped paint the MAC garage for the market. You know, we've kind of had our, we, we have been supportive. That's the best way I guess I can say is be supportive of it. Um, but we've not expended specific. Is there a recommended amount that you're proposing? I would recommend um, up to $5,000 just based upon your current budget. That would still leave you with a little over $6,000 you know, to play with, if you will, in operating. Um, I think we also certainly still do have some fundraising opportunities, but I would recommend up to $5,000, um, but it is certainly up to the board what, what they would like to do. Does anybody have an opinion? Well, on... we have the money. Uh, we may as well use it in a good place. And I, uh, I think this is certainly something that will hopefully help uh, bring people downtown and help the community. So I would say uh, yes to $5,000. I don't know if I should make a motion for that effect or not. Is the $5,000, is that determined how much they need to launch this or where, where would the $5,000 go to? Whatever they deem necessary? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So my understanding is, you know, um, I mean, is there a series of events that are going to happen or is it just like this is the first one or and they were taking the 5,000? Yeah, so good question. I think what they would do in that case, so let's pretend they don't raise the full 50. I think that what they would do is they would prioritize events and activities. Like, for example, I can tell you, you know, the MAC market is is of high priority. I think I can speak speak pretty closely to that. So, like, they would probably take a portion of our sponsorship and still continue to support that. Um you know, they would still take a portion of the sponsorship and continue to support, you know, perhaps it's some of the uh, picnic tables and elevated plaza spaces, anything that they would deem um, appropriate. But I, think I have a question and my internet cut out. No, that's okay. And I didn't hear the beginning of that. Is this, and so this may be a repeat, and all in, like, this is if they get a hundred grand, all of this is going to happen, or this is going to be an annual fundraising effort. Oh, I see. Like, if they get how much grand, the entire project? Right. If they get a hundred uh -huh. grand, all of this is going to happen. If they don't, it, really, they need to fundraise fifty, right, to get fifty. If they get fifty, right, if they meet their threshold, all of this is going to happen. If they don't get all of it, then I believe they're going to prioritize and determine what they can enact. I just didn't know if. The, yep. If and this is the only request right now. Is your question like, would they launch maybe one of these again in a year? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Like, like, is is a hundred grand enough for all of what's here to get it all off the ground? That I guess I didn't know if it was like a half a million dollar project. If it was a hundred grand, you know, to kind of start like if this was just like the first round or if this is all inclusive. But it seems like what you're saying is most everything should get done within the hundred grants if they were to achieve that. That is my understanding, yes. And the MEDC match is not dollar for dollar, it's all or nothing? That is also my understanding. Mayor Pro Tem, do you have a different understanding? No, that's my understanding as well. I think if, it, if the full amount is not raised, then there will be no match and I think our our donation would sort of be returned to us, I guess, and we would have to decide if we wanted to. Um, yeah, are they gonna if if they only raise thirty thousand dollars, and obviously the MEDC won't match, are they still gonna go forward with anything under that thirty thousand dollar umbrella, or is it just this isn't gonna work? Or start over? Yeah, or start over, or just do a little project, or no projects, or. I, do we know how that's going to work? I don't think we know specifically how that's going to work. Um, Amy might have a more recent conversation with Mr. Cummins than I've had, but I do understand. I do know that this isn't an all or nothing project. There's like different pieces to the project. So I think at that point we would probably go back and decide which, you know, with the money that's available, um, there was a certain amount of that money. I think $10,000 was uh, from council. So that would go back into the general fund and we'd have to decide if we wanted to, you know, dedicate that to downtown um, activation. We would kind of see how much we had that was not individual donors that was from within the city organization and ask those people if they were still willing to 
dedicate that money and then decide what that would fund. So I think um, my personal hope would be that we would make the fundraising call and that we would push for that, right? So um, if we didn't, then it would be a significant change in plans and it would require kind of a lot more discussion about exactly which parts of that were the most important to fund. Hey, Amy, can you scroll back down to page five? I thought it said on there somewhere that the MEDC was going to be a dollar for dollar sponsor. Let's say if we hit our crowdfunding goal, the project will be dollar for dollar match. Okay. So I have to hit the goal. Um, okay. And just out of personal question, are they, Adam, whoever is doing, heading up this, um, is this being pushed out for fundraising to the community, like businesses, or is this mostly hoping to be funded through city boards and commissions? It is being pushed out through the community. Um, and I know that we have shared it like with massive press releases and on social media. I know that personal phone calls have been made. Um, I think that the hope is, right, that whoever wants to give, certainly if other boards and commissions want to give, that's great. But I think that the reality of the situation is um, there is a recognition here that it's going to take more than just boards and commissions to get us to that $50,000 mark. Yeah. So, Amy, to recap, it's Jim. Um, it sounds like City Council has already opted to contribute to this cause is that correct that's correct and my understanding is their contribution is is already indicated in the platform so i believe we've had 12 a little over twelve thousand dollars fundraised to date um and i know that um mr cummins and several others are kind of sharing this in various you know in various entities throughout the community Sounds good. Well, I, this is a great project. We've reviewed it before. I've looked at it in detail. It's, it's outstanding. Um, I, I believe it'll. It's one of the one of the best things we can do for downtown. So I, I'd make a motion for the five thousand dollars. And uh, I, think, I guess if if folks are inclined to go higher, that's fine too. My thought is that we do the five thousand, and then we would still have the option of of you coming back to us uh, if we're really close to the to the uh, to the goal and so on and then we could rethink it at that point but at this point I make a motion for five that's certainly possible Jim I, I would be happy to do that to keep everybody apprised of how the fundraising is going um you're muted Jesse I tried to unmute and I muted. Sorry, um, Amy. What's the what's the um, timeline for this? How when's the deadline for the full amount? Yeah, I believe that we have uh, thirty days. In fact, twenty nine days on that thing you pulled up the ticker. Was it twenty nine days? Okay. Um, it is. There are twenty seven days left. So I'm glad I looked. So so far, thirty six patrons organizations have contributed, and there are twenty seven days left. Certainly, if we became close and this board was interested in, in um, reevaluating before our next board meeting, then we could have a discussion about holding a special board meeting to do that. I have one last question. On that page we we're just on, it showed the sponsorships from other places. Mm -hmm. um, those, no, not mm, the the probably the project itself. Probably this guy. This guy. Yeah. It was, I think on what, page five? I don't know. I don't know. It just showed, there was just a page up that was showing sponsorships to date. Not all of those are being paid directly through this match. Is that correct? Because it shows like $75,000 from DDA and like $5,000 from Board of Water and Light, but it shows the city council $10,000. I think that's correct. Yes. Okay. So not all of those funds, even though there are already fifty thousand dollars in funds towards this project, they're not all being funneled in through this match that, program. That's correct. And I guess I can speak to the DDA. Um, I know that the DDA had approved 
funding towards downtown initiatives directly linked to this project proposal. But for example, um, you know, I know that the DDA provided funding so that um, picnic tables and seating areas could be downtown. Perhaps people have seen that kind of um, underneath the center city area. Um, and so there are elements that are kind of linked to this project. It's, you know, when you kind of think of place making big picture, there are elements that DDA has already spent funds on. Um, and like DDA has helped pay for the paint, for example, for the market and is gonna help, you know, kind of make sure that the market goes forward. But additional fundraising is necessary. Like, I think the best way to say it is like you said, Chanel, like, is to make sure that like all of the things in the, in the portfolio could be. Yeah, I would just, cause it showed a list yeah. that was much larger than $50,000 in some already. That donated. stuff was all done before the project started. Yeah. Okay, so is that, but the $10,000, I just want to make sure, so I understand, from the city, the $10,000 on the city, that is going into the match, per, okay. Yes, yes, the match right now is at the, is it a little more than 12000 that's where the match is, yes. That includes the city's 10000 Yes. Cool, yeah. Okay, so I, I I know we had a motion. I apologize. Was there a motion and a second? Are we? I'll second, Quinn. I think. So I think Ray made the original motion, and then Jim remade the motion, and okay. so and now Corey is seconding it. Okay. That's so fine. I can do a roll call vote, unless there's further discussion. Okay, I will do that. The only thought the only thought that I had is whether or not. We make the contribution right away or wait till later in the month. Um, I don't know whether or not that would encourage people to might have uh, the public to donate right if they don't. You, Otherwise, you perhaps. I've been thinking the same thing. Ray, you want to mute? Um, otherwise, uh, um, there might be a lot of the public that thinks that it's just going to be funded by boards and commissions and they may not be as tempted to, to donate. Or I guess you could look at it the other way wherein they'll see that the downtown business organizations are donating and maybe they'll jump on board. So I don't know, just a, just I was thinking the same thing because I, that's why I was asking if it was being pushed out to the public or not, because I just feel like I wouldn't necessarily know as a general public member, what boards and commissions and how this was working. But if I saw a ton of like large donations from boards and commissions that may come across, like they're going to, hit this goal because look at all these big dollars behind them between these big groups and city groups and maybe the rest of the city will just push in more or something like, you know what I'm saying? So I was also um, having a similar thought, but I don't really care. It's just, I, that thought crossed my mind as well. I guess when I, when I contribute to these campaigns, I've done uh, you know, just personally, a few different patronage campaigns. I think the Fenner Park Pavilion was the last one that I donated to. Once they get about halfway and it seems like there's a chance of meeting the goal, I'm a little bit more motivated to, to do it because I think it might actually make it. Um, so I don't know. I think putting in a chunk um, up front to kind of get it closer to that halfway point might be helpful. Um, either way, I don't, I don't really know strategically if there's a way to push it, but um uh this is jim Kroom. uh i think um i'm thinking along the lines that just is is thinking that like for instance you know we're in the quiet phase of raising money for a sparrow capital campaign and the, the foundation experts tend to say we're doing the quiet phase so that when we roll out the campaign it has momentum and and as you draw closer, you can kind of encourage people to say, look, jump on board, and it creates an excitement. I don't, I know that by passing the motion, it will be public information, but as we're individually fundraising or staff is fundraising and so on, I think the comment would just be, we have X amount of dollars so far, and, and uh, here's how much more we need. I don't know that people will ask, like, well, where did it come from? So yeah, I kind of, I kind of like putting it out there now. Okay, so let's vote on the motion, I guess. Okay. So the motion is for a sponsorship of $5,000 towards the daytime, nighttime, anytime placemaking project. 
Crouch. Yes. Hewson. Yes. Kroom. Yes. Kruger. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Quinn. Yes. Greg. Yes. And I think Yonk has hopped off. Audrey, are you there? Okay. The motion passes. All right. So Amy, uh, thank you for this. Um, is there, I'm driving, so I don't recall what the, what the format of the package is, but uh, number one, so is there a packet that for instance, if I want to send it to contacts at Jackson National, I got to send them something, right? So is there a ready-made, is this thing ready-made to electronically go out to people that if, if our board members on DMB or DDA want to reach out to people. I know that uh, Adam is contacting board members to try and enlist their help in fundraising. Is there something like that? Or Absolutely, it, yeah. And I think, um, I think Jim, I could certainly provide you with this document if you'd like this detailed document, but the patronicity campaign itself, like I have a direct link that you could then just share with them and say, you know, if you wanted to do something like, hey, this is a really cool, you know, I feel like this is a really cool project, do and, you know, here are the elements that you would be funding. I, there's a direct link that I can send them to. Absolutely. Yeah, rather, yeah, for me and for that one uh, potential donor, I, I would like a PDF type thing rather okay. than a link. Okay. Yep. Um, I can send exists. that out to board members. And then what uh, is Adam reaching out? Is, is that what? Then what's the outreach to every single business in town? I mean, we have that list. Is that through you? Is that through? Yeah, I think the thought process was if this board was comfortable with it, because I know it's, um, you know, I know that our job is to sort of promote and, and assist with the downtown, but I'm I'm happy to certainly just forward it on as an FYI and just tell businesses about it and, you know, encourage them to review it. It's obviously of their own, own volition if they would like to, to give. Yeah, if it's being sent out to our businesses, I think that it should be sent out in a way that just is, just so you're aware of what's happening or what we're yeah. trying to do rather than like, if you guys would like to support this, because really the whole point behind this is to support them. Right. And I don't, I think that a lot of the businesses in downtown are not in a position to be able to give money in large amounts to anything outside of their pockets right now. So I don't want it, people to feel pressured that we're expecting them to pay for it um, from us, from the DMVs expecting them to pay for it. Um, so I have no problem sending it out. I just don't want it to be framed in a fundraising um, language. Okay, I would be happy to do that. Alrighty, so moving on. 5.1, sorry, I have a guest with me. And I am, you know, here we go. So um, it's always nice to bring you guys some positive news. And um, I, I just, I wanna take a moment to personally thank every single board member that helped us with the gift card program. I wanna thank you for your time in emailing other colleagues and sharing it with other businesses and posting it on social media. Um, it, it really did, in my opinion, have a tremendous impact. So, um, you know, we launched the program on December 11th. And at that time, we launched the program with $3,000 as part of a BOGO program. So it was buy one, get one, but it wasn't um, a true like, you know, one for one match. Um, but it was certainly enough that people were very interested. So we launched it and it was first come first serve. And essentially people, those that bought, um, you know, 20, uh, $25 or more, you know, received a $10 gift card for free. If they bought $50 or more, they received a $20 gift card for free. If they bought $100 or more, they got a $40 gift card for free. So we launched that on December 11th and within 28 hours, it, all the BOGO money was gone, which I think is a real testament to the interest level of people. Um, Cause it was certainly a Saturday afternoon when I was getting in touch with YFD and saying, okay, you know, we gotta, we gotta cap this for right now. Um, due to that monumental success, the downtown development authority did come and say, hey, you know, we think that this is great. It's part of our own placemaking project. We'd also like to support this and give you money to do a second round of BOGO. So thank you very much to, to the DDA for all of that. 
So we did the exact same terms that we did before because we thought that people were familiar with those. Um, we launched the program and within three and a half days, the $5,000 was gone. So I did what, um, hopefully this will work. I wanted to just kind of um, take a moment and show you the portal. Can people see this? So this is the YIFTI portal. It's sort of the internal portal, if you will. Um, but this is really the dashboard. So if anybody is interested, I'm happy to kind of give you, you know, um, information so that you can log in as well. Of course, it's going to lose it while I'm on it. Um, but uh, essentially what I wanted to try to show you is that there's lots of opportunity here to, um, you know, to see the metrics. So when you look at this, you know, essentially what this is saying to me is that, hey, since you launched the, your gift card program on December 11th, we have sold or given away through BOGOs $31,120 in, in gift cards or in promotions. We have, um, you know, had a little over $5,000 in gift cards redeemed, so $5,677.23. We have sent, for example, um, you know, the gift card card is like at $790. Um, and actually, I think that that's a little misleading because it looks like actually we've had $6,034.25 in gifts redeemed. So um, there's just been a monumental um, support from that. I mean, I think that we should all be pretty proud that, I mean, if you think about this, it's been one month and, you know, there's, there's you know, $31,000 worth of sales. So um, in my mind, uh, that's, that's gone really well. Um, certainly, I think now my recommendation as your liaison would be to sort of market and really continue to encourage people to use those gift cards, right? Because now it's, it's something where there's goods and services that, you know, people are reserved to give, but we want them to now actually spend them in the locations. We have um, 32, I believe, business locations that are accepting the gift cards right now. I continue to receive inquiries. Um, it's a very simple process. They can just sign up online right here through the YIFTI. Essentially, we work with them. We send them an activation code, and, and that's it. They're done. Um, you know, we can um, change the verbiage on the web page. It's sort of a plug and play web page. So I think that that has gone really well. And then I can even like do things. I can I can send certain reports to all of you. So, you know, if the board is ever interested to say like, hey, for example, you know, who did we, you know, send stuff to? And it's, it has my name because I'm technically the city. So, you know, I did buy gift cards, but I didn't buy all of these gift cards just to like be clear with people. But, you know, if you ever want to see like a report of, hey, I thought I, you know, received this this gift card or are we, for example, selling most gift cards at $25 and we consider another BOGO. There's lots of um, ways that we can kind of track what's going on. The other thing that I really appreciate about the program is that we get reminders. So once a month, people constantly get reminders. If you guys have purchased one or it hasn't been quite a month yet, expect to get like a text reminder to your phone because it'll say like, hey, you haven't used your gift. So I think that that's another uh, good component. But I just wanted to kind of share this with everybody, um, let you know where we're at. Certainly we can, you know, talk about making this another marketing mechanism through the spring and summer months. But um, I think that I, I personally feel like the launch was really successful and I wanna thank the board for, for all of their hard work on that. Yeah, I think it's awesome. It's exactly what I think we all hoped would happen. I think $30,000 in gift card sales is, um, pretty impressive for a short rollout time period. It's not like we were like advertising this for a while before um, we went live with it. I think also you have to remember the students aren't back in school yet. Restaurants are closed and that can be a huge portion of why gift cards haven't been redeemed yet. Um, so that's not entirely shocking to me as, as well when looking at the numbers, but uh, I would be curious for whenever we do another round or have somebody do another round of um, BOGO type specials, I would like to look at the average cost purchased um, so that then we can kind of uh, see where people were at and see if we can incentivize that to go up a percentage based upon framing our um, BOGOs around what the average purchase price was of the gift cards, but that's just for future. Anyone else have any opinions on this? I would agree. Well, like I said, if anybody wants me to run any detailed reports or you know, you'd be interested in kind of being able to access this account, let me know. Um, I'm happy to kind of share this with everybody, but um, again, I think 
I think that this was um, really great and well received and um, you know the media seemed to really follow it well over the holidays so um, I think that, that well it's nice to see that it's working nice to see that it's working yep I agree it's nice it's always nice to have metrics so all right so I think we can move right along um, in other success stories, um, I did want to provide some metrics regarding the uh, partnership with Piper and Gold. So as uh, most people are aware, and frankly, as you were all aware, um, you know, we did partner with Piper and Gold to launch sort of a media focused campaign. Um, it's that contract um, expired on December 31st. Um, but I think that there were some really positive results. Um, the campaign itself included over 23 pieces of media coverage that estimated um, 350 million person online readership. Um, it actually also earned three national placements. Um, it was a lot of the press releases that we put out or you know, stories that were featured um, appeared on Fox 47, the State News, the Michigan Business Network. Um, and certainly I think that the gift card program you know, uh, sort of helped perpetuate that as, long, as well as the launch of our um, downtown East Lansing app. So, um, you know, while, um, you know, we were certainly not quiet over the holidays, I guess is, is what I would say. Um, and they did provide um, a detailed uh, coverage book. So I don't know if anybody had an opportunity to kind of look through that, but it's certainly included in your packet. And, um, you know, I'm happy to, to try to answer any questions. And if I don't know, I'm certainly happy to talk with Piper and Gold, but, um, you know, lots of just information about what was covered and how it was covered. Yeah, I'm glad the campaign was successful. Did, is, is there a, it's just a question, is there a, a method by which we let the businesses know that it was successful? Is that something advisable to do or not? You know, I'm happy if, if folks would like, um, you know, I'm happy to maybe when I send information out about the campaign, I could kind of make it a double whammy and say, you know, hey, there's just, you know, there's this placemaking project going on. And just so you also know, if we think this is appropriate, like, you know, this campaign ended and, and we're really quite proud of the results. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to just work to, to support you guys as we go along. That seems applicable. Yeah, I would, as I said, I would favor that. We're, we're, uh, routinely talking at, on the DMV about letting the business know how we're adding value and, and how where their money goes and and so on. And so I, I think it's a good idea, just an FYI. And you could go out with something that you're already sending. Yeah, exactly. Maybe do it frames like with this, the other thing, and add the YFD success so that people feel good about that and just kind of be like a what DMV is working, like a roundup of what DMB has been doing and what we're looking forward to do in the next, looking forward to doing in the next couple of months, just kind of as like a newsletter type. Thing. Yep. Got it. Cause I think we should also put the EFD stuff in there. Cause then we can also maybe get some more businesses from seeing the success from that. Absolutely. Maybe more businesses signing up to accept it. Absolutely. Oh. Sounds great. Okay. The yard signs. Yes, so at the last board meeting, um, you did approve funding for yard signs. Um, and so I am pleased to share that right before the holidays, I, uh, I was able to get yard signs. So we purchased um, a little over, I think 120 yard signs is what we purchased in different colors. So these are in your packets. There are purple. There are kind of uh, this kind of teal blue that matches our logo, if you will. And then there's more of the traditional green. Um, we have distributed over 30 and I just received a request for 40 more sort of throughout the city. So I think that we're probably gonna see these go quickly. Um, so I guess I would say that today people have sort of reserved 70 of them. Um, the way that I've been distributing them is I am personally a liaison to the Bailey neighborhood. So the Bailey neighborhood has um, received some for myself. And then the council of neighborhood presidents received an email correspondence um, from the mayor kind of asking residents if they would like some. So um, they have been positive and responsive. I don't know if anybody follows, uh, for example, Peanut Barrel on social media, but Peanut Barrel actually took some photos of these throughout the neighborhoods and it was kind of nice. It was kind of cute and people were supportive. So um, I certainly think that uh, this is being well received if, if nothing else for people kind of, you know, giving that imagery, that, that 
you know, peace of mind about what to do. The posters have also been printed um, and Gabby is actually gonna return back to the office on Friday. So on Friday, Gabby and I are gonna go out to the businesses and give them the poster version of the yard signs so that those can be throughout the downtown. Um, not related to this project, but just so you're aware, separate from that is, you know, as part of the placemaking project, we are launching the children's art exhibits. Um, so that will be uh, digital photography featured by high school seniors. And that is gonna launch, we're gonna start installing those in businesses on Saturday. When I say we, I mean uh, DMV, DDA staff um, are gonna help with the art teachers. So a press release went out about that last week, um, but I wanted to just kind of remind everybody that basically the businesses are gonna see us really out and about a lot this week. So Friday, they're gonna see a lot of poster materials and Saturday the, the art exhibits um, will start being put up and then that will launch for the public on Monday. So there are, um, I believe 89 art pieces and that are gonna be featured in 15 business locations. So hopefully that will drive um, Traffic, you know, I think it's good people are interested in this. This just made me think of, because we were just talking about the gift cards. Does Yifty have any sort of like, or we'd have to make them ourselves if they don't, like window sticker for businesses to put that says like now accepting Yifty downtown East Lansing gift cards or something like that so that- yeah. So they don't have a decal, but I actually have our graphic designer um, whip up something um, so yeah. I think, I don't know if that's something you want to retain. I was thinking of just taking it to marketing committee, but I think that we can probably get something printed for less than $200. Yeah, that would just be a nice, yeah, like a nice sticker decal. Yep. Something to put in a window that says like accepting downtown East Lansing gift cards or whatever, like, so that Absolutely. then other people see that too, that don't know about them and are like, what's a downtown East Lansing gift card, you know? Yep. Yep. Amy. Amy, could you have them put together something that they, we could also use on social media? Yeah. Are you thinking like stuff? a toolkit, Mike? Like, like a we thing. accept you yeah. gift cards? Yep. yep. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. So we're going to work you. on a we accept EFT gift cards kind of social stuff. And the decal. I know the graphic designer worked on a decal. Perfect. Okay. And then if any of you want a yard sign and want me to drop them off at your house in a six foot distance, I will deliver them. I know one of you has already reached out. So anybody wants yard signs? Yes, I'm seeing three of you. Perfect. Okay, I will get, I will get in touch with you guys separately so that you can also be the proud pronoun of the yard signs. So. Um, can we put those up in like uh, in front of the business? Um, on uh, Grand River in the uh, median at all? So, Ray, I don't think we're supposed to put them in the median. Um, I don't think we're supposed to put them in the median. Uh, that is my or first I, I, offer, like but, answer, which is why we created the posters at the same time. Okay. I'm not the median police, so. Okay, just a thought. Maybe not. Yeah, M. Dodd <laughs> is the one that would take those down. But uh, we will definitely deliver the posters. So, okay. So, um, and I thought, I know that at the last board meeting, there was discussion about maybe offering some of these yards, like starting to charge people for yard signs. So I thought I, if people are interested, I could whip up a quick pro forma and we could discuss that at the next marketing or business relations meeting if we actually do want to, you know, try to fundraise for those. Maybe we could sell them at the market or something that's coming up. Maybe people give five dollars for a yard sign. It's entirely up to you. If it, if it covered the cost of the signs, and then if leftovers could go into like a further gift card match program, I think that would be. I think it would be appropriate, and I think it would be fairly well supported. So, since I don't usually go to the marketing meetings, I'm saying it here. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, so those are uh, the major. Um, business items I have before you. Uh, since December, uh, I guys, I let you guys off the hook because you were all uh, gracious and kind of reached out to people about the gift card program. Um, we did not have a marketing or a business relations meeting, but I do have parking updates um, that I can share unless anybody has any final questions about yard signs or posters. Okay, so Caleb did just provide this with me. I'm just going to read it um, and then I can, I'm happy to forward it on to you digitally. Um, he said that there was a gated parking facility program um, issue on December 24th, so apparently on Christmas Eve, causing the gates to go back down during a portion of the day in error. 
Um, a press release was issued and validations refunds are being offered to customers charged in the error. Um, so he wanted to make you aware of that. I personally did see the press release. I know that it was distributed, but if, um, if anybody has customers that obviously say anything to you about what happened on Christmas Eve, feel free to have them get in touch directly with Caleb. Or if you don't remember Caleb, you know, send them to me and I will get them in touch with Caleb and we will try to rectify that situation. Um, he said that, due, that, he also says that due to the parking budget, um, they've deferred $450,000 in facilities repairs. Um, at this time, a lot of that includes um, like desh, deck washdowns, stairwell washdowns, deodorizing, window washings. Uh, they have closed two garage roofs for the winter to save on plowing and ice melt expenses. Um, they do have one unfulfilled management position. So, um, uh, and it looks like parking ambassadors are staffed at less than 50% due to less traffic. So we're just not apparently seeing uh, the same amount of parking as we have in years past. I think that that can probably be, you know, contributed in a lot of different ways. Obviously, MSU is remote right now, things of that nature. Um, they are, it looks like the parking staff um, is meeting today actually to discuss moped um, parking permits. Um, they are working with a third party storage company to see what other storage options are for the garages. Um, and they, he wants to uh, share with you that the 15 minute grace period in gated facilities is, is still in place that is up from five minutes previously. So those are the major updates that I have. I don't know if anyone has anything specific to parking. Sorry, my light turns off, guys. It's on there. Um, that I'm happy to forward on to Caleb, but those are the major updates that he asked I provide you with. Uh, I guess uh, one question that I have uh, is um, how to get parking uh, passes that we can give out to our customers. Uh, because the City Hall closed, there's no way that we can go down there and just uh, usually either write a check or give them a credit card. Um, do they mail them to us or how would we, uh, how can we get more of uh, the uh, green and white uh, tickets? I can answer that, Amy, if you don't want to. Ray, I just called the parking office um, phone number. It's listed on their website. Um, there's an employee that's on duty. They're just not in the office. So you just have to call them on the phone and get somebody with your voice to tell them that how much you want. And then they'll they'll make arrangements to meet you at the office. Thank you, Thank you very much. I, I'll do that. Yep, no problem. I had the same problem, so. <laughs> okay. And maybe I should talk to Kayla. Maybe this is another communications thing where I should just, you know, my email to the businesses, just make them aware that that's what they can do right now. Do a catch-all email with everybody. Okay. So Thank those you. Are the subcommittee updates. Thank you, Ray. Okay, then. So moving on to a DDA liaison report. Who wants to do it? Oh, I can do that this month if Mike does it next month. Um, there was no meeting, so there's no report. Oh. <laughs> that was sneaky, Mr. Crone. That's the end of the stick, Mike. Wrong play. <laughs> That was, that was like my three-year-old. That was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of stuck in that range. You know that, Amy. No, I, don't take, I hope you didn't take that offensively. That was just sneaky. I like that. Okay. All right. Well, I am sure that Mr. Krum and Mr. Kruger will have other updates for us because I know that there are some DDA meetings this month. So, um, And then under written communications, you do have a, um, a formal sponsorship request letter. I know that in the past, what we have done is possibly deferred those to either one of the subcommittee meets to um, consider funding. So I don't know if that's the will of the board for this one, but I'd be happy to like perhaps place it on the marketing committee or business relations committee agenda for consideration. Um, I don't know if anyone has a strong opinion on that, but that was your written correspondence or if folks would just like me to tell them thank you, but no, thank you. I'm fine moving it along to a committee. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. 
then I think what I'll do is maybe I will uh, pass that, that forward that on to the business relations committee and have them kind of further discuss it and see how they think that would work uh, long term. And then finally, um, the board had requested at the last board meeting for just a thank you letter to go out to um, Mr. Muth. So this is the thank you letter. Um, and unless anyone has any um, changes or edits, we will get Chanel's signature and get this to him for his service. Looks good. He helped out a lot on the board, so I appreciate it. He did. Okay. Wonderful. All right. All right. Um, so those are all of the agenda items that I had for you today. All right. I'll motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. I will do a roll call vote. Crouch. Yes. Houston. Did, oh, actually, Mr. Houston left. I apologize. Kroom. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Kruger. Yes. Quinn. Yes. Greg. Yes. The motion passes. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I will be in touch shortly about um, our next marketing and business relations committee meetings. The next business relations committee meeting is next Tuesday at four. So those subcommittee members can expect to hear from you. Thank you all. Have a great day. <laughs>